Welcome guys to the Archon Nidus build. For this build, we're going to be using Ice Wave from Frost. We're going to be replacing our little uh, ball of crap that pulls in enemies, our crowd control, and replacing it with the Ice Wave. But this is the Archon build for Nidus, right? We're going to be using five shards on top of Archon Flow as well. It's five health regeneration, um, two Tau Forge, so 7.5 each, and then the rest are plus fives. So let's go ahead and jump to the build. We're going to go for Steel Charge because melee is amazing. I love melee anyway. And it gives you the most of all capacity. So you get that plus 9. And when you equip it, you get that plus 18, right? Uh, feel free to change it as long as you have a plus 18 or a plus 9 um, aura. Um, that should give you enough slots to make sure you can pull this off. Now, we will be using two Umbral Forma. And we'll also be using an Exilus Adapter to give ourselves an extra slot. After Steel Charge, we're going to go with a Cunning Drift just to give ourselves a bit more range. And then as much strength as you could fit here. So Blind Rage for that plus 99. We're going to go with Umbral Intensify and the Umbral Vitality because one, we need health. And two, we need strength, right? So both of these together should add up and give you a bonus of 55% uh, ability strength. For survivability, we'll be using Adaptation, which will basically give us 90% damage reductions or resistance. We're going to go with overextended because we want a lot of range on this, right? We're going to be pairing overextended up with stretch and cunning drift, like I said before. Now we're going to have hunter adrenaline because we will not be using an arcane energize. We'll be using hunter adrenaline and two other different arcanes. So this will be our main energy source. And then last but not least, archon flow. So we'll be having 275 energy max like normal. But then that passive of enemies killed by cold abilities have a 10% chance to drop an energy orb. Cooldown 10 seconds. Not really the best little passive, but it is good to have when you're, you know, in star chart missions. Because your ice wave will actually one shot up to about level 30. Depending on enemy types, and if it's not one shot at 30, it's going to be like two shots at 30. So, pretty good anyway for star chart level missions. For your arcanes, I would recommend Arcane Grace to give ourselves even more healing uh, because as you know, we have the 5 Archon Shards to give us health regeneration and Nidus already has health regeneration in his kit. So everything put together is uh, insane on healing or health regeneration. And then I like having Molt Augmented because as you guys know, Nidus is passive when he stacks it with his wand or uses his ultimate to get maggots and then you stomp on maggots, it basically increasing his stacks. Um, which increases the strength of his one, right? The more stacks, the more damage your one does. Now that combines with Mold Augmented, so you're basically double stacking. You're stacking Mold Augmented up to 250 kills, and then you're stacking your passive up to 100. So you're, you're increasing your damage twice, or yeah, you guys get what I'm saying. As far as your weapons go, it does not matter. Use whatever you want. Um, one weapon that I would highly recommend for higher level missions right now is the Felarx, and this is what I'm currently using. Felarx is a shotgun, it's one of those Incarnon um, weapons, and Incarnon mode basically turns a shotgun into a, a dual pistol that just kind of goes out pretty far. So it's not longer a shotgun, it's like a dual weird pistol thing. And then with these mods, it's, it does insane damage, you'll be one-shotting over level 100s, and it's really good against sentience as well. Now, if you guys really want energy, feel free to use a Nurik. I just like using the Unira one because you do have the Caustic Strike ability, which allows you to shred all armor. So you just pop into your Tenno, throw out the little ball of crap, and then boom, all armor is gone on the enemy. That's worst case scenario, but yeah, with this build, honestly, you're just surviving, and then you use your weapon to kill things. So let's go ahead and put level 175, uh, 20 crafted Heavy Gunners. We'll go over here. We'll collect energy with our Hunter Adrenaline, so we'll just get shot at. Boom, boom. Come on. There we go. We need some stacks, right? Let's go ahead and get to this guy. Boom. Easy. So we're going to be just collecting stacks. A save amount of stacks, I would say, is about 20. So if they're really high level like these guys, right? You can see my, my one doesn't do that much damage because they're heavily armored. I have 28 stacks, 29. That's perfect. Now, look at how long it takes them, right? Like, they're shooting the hell out of me, and my health is going down slowly, but just because I'm staying still. If I roll around, easy. They can't really target me too well, so my health goes up. As long as you're moving, 
You could even stand there for a little bit at these levels, right? 175. You should be fine. Then that's when you can pop your ultimate to heal even more. If they're too fast for you, just go ahead and do your ice wave. And then the cool thing is that with two ice waves, they get 10 stacks, so they're relatively really slow. And then maggots show up, and then boom, you can go ahead and pop them, just get more stacks. All basically, just do them whatever you want. Because whenever you die, you'll just go ahead and, you know, <laughs> come back to life. And you, I think you lose about 15 stacks. But then this is what I said, right? At this level, right, you can do all this stuff, it's fine. But then you struggle at killing things because, once again, it's uh, they're heavily armored. So you can go around and take their armor off if you want to. I feel like this takes too much time. Gee, I can kill this guy now because he has no armor. I would just recommend having a really strong weapon like this, right? You just look at this guy, shoot him once, and he's dead. Let me go ahead and kill this guy. Oh, we lost our Link. Okay, I'll let him kill me. Boom, right? I'm dying. And we can still do whatever we want. We can make more if we want to. No issue whatsoever. Which is why I really just like playing Nidus in general. But once again, let's go back to the shotgun, right? So the shotgun, boom, he's dead. You're one-shotting level 175 corrupted heavy gunners, which is just insane. This guy right here, boom, he's dead. Who gives a shit, right? This guy, boom, he's dead. And then use your incarnate form, right? Go ahead and just take this thing out. Shoot this guy. Oh, I guess it didn't change. Here, I'll change it now. There we go. Boom, boom, you have a lot more range. So if someone's far away, you can just bam, do more damage. And then the cool thing is this weapon uh, procs radiation too on your secondary or on your uh, incarnate form. But yeah, that is the build, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, please let me know in the comments down below what you thought. Would you be using this build? Would you be using the Arkham Flow mod? It, these mods are very just situational. Like in this case, if you're playing in star chart level missions, your two will be killing a lot of enemies. And just because it goes very far. Look at this. Like the range is crazy on this. But yeah, I'll be slowing them down. Doing about 1k to 2k damage depending on the enemy. And they should be one-shotting between levels 1 to 30, maybe even 40, right? Just depending on the enemy. And if it's that one shot, then it's going to be two shots, which is still fine. Because if they live, then you get slowed down. So that, that works out. So if you guys enjoyed, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe. But yeah, that's it, guys. Um, I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.